Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video blog from my lovely home office in Jerusalem. And um, I want to talk today, this is gonna be a video blog, one of the first uh, real sit down vlogs I've done in a while. Uh, so if you're expecting content fireworks and uh, great effects to show up on the screen and whatnot, you're gonna be disappointed. It's just gonna be me talking into the webcam here today. But it is something I wanted to put, put out there because I've just been thinking about this for, uh, the past uh, the past uh, hour or so today and that's regarding this whole idea of YouTube and if you start a YouTube channel or a YouTube presence do you have to have a theme now I've warned warned the people subscribing to my YouTube channel um, I think when I hit the 500 subscriber milestone on a few occasions that I don't intend this this channel like my personal channel the videos I'm putting up on YouTube I don't intend to focus on a theme I do intend in the future starting different channels that are going to have a theme but for now while i'm learning stuff it's just easier for me rather than think about okay this i should have one channel about tech one channel about this one channel about this for different audiences i'm just like putting it all out there under one channel uh so for anyone subscribed to the channel i do realize it's probably like a super uh frustrating subscription experience but that that's exactly the point that i actually want to challenge in this vlog, that idea that YouTube has to be about your subscribers. Now, this is gonna say it's gonna sound contrary, um, but those are the those are the opinions I I, I like, um, and that's what I'm gonna talk about. So here's what here's what I think is incredible about YouTube. Firstly, YouTube is absolutely vast. Like the amount of content and quality content that's just out there for anyone looking to better their lives or get alternative perspectives. I create YouTube playlists on like almost a daily basis now. Uh, most of them are public. Anyone's free to click into playlists uh, tab on this channel to see what kind of stuff I'm learning about. But for me, I probably spend two or three hours per day sitting down, uh, usually at night, I get my tablet out um, and I'm increasingly just watching YouTube. I don't even like really watch mainstream stuff on Netflix any night. So it's a gigantic uh, content library. And what I think is so cool about YouTube I, I, I want to suggest this. I think there's a double standard when it comes to what's in, increasingly known as big tech. And YouTube uh, being part of Google would certainly be in that category of what people call big tech. When big tech do things that rouses people's anger, for, for, and we're seeing that right now with Elon Musk, um, uh, the buyout of Twitter, right? When people see something that irritates them about the way big tech is working or you know, Apple's work from home policy. There's a lot of furore and criticism out there on the internet. And the double standard I suggest is that people also overlook the amazing technology that big tech brings to market. If you take YouTube, for example, I've looked several times to see if there are YouTube alternatives just, just purely out of interest. There's a couple of very, very small video hosting platforms. I've tried most of them and I have to say, I haven't found anyone that's actually good. They're all pretty small and buggy. And I think the reason for that is to roll out something as good as YouTube. You just need vast resources. If you think the amount of storage required to make YouTube work, if you think about the, the amount of computing resources on the back end of YouTube to take, you know, a terabytes of footage coming at their servers every minute, process it really, really quickly. I mean, it's incredible how quickly uh, that processing process works and then provide that video um, in a compressed codec that's easy to stream and then they have YouTube has a technology that you know if you have a slow internet connection they'll de-res it so that you can go all the way down to I think uh, 360p and obviously the top is going to be the max res on your video so if you upload in 4k someone with a good internet connection can watch your video in 4k and if you um, or the same video, someone with a really sucky internet connection, they need to watch it in 240p, they can watch it in 240p or 360p or, or whatever, low, low resolution video. So that technology that YouTube offers is absolutely amazing. And it puts so much power in the hands of creators for free. And when you think about YouTube from that perspective, I would suggest that YouTube is an amazing deal. That's why I'm putting these videos up on YouTube. I'm not doing it because, and this is again, this is where I sort of see a big difference between the mass uh, sort of uh, take on YouTube, which is YouTube is a platform for monetization, right? The only reason people start YouTube channels is because they want to monetize. Now, if you want to go down that approach, which is one approach, 
it absolutely makes sense to focus on the subscriber experience. It absolutely makes sense to, to niche down. There's no way you should be running a YouTube channel like my YouTube channel to date and trying to make money off it just because uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, just from a marketing standpoint, it's all over the place, right? You're gonna have, you want, you wanna have a niche, you wanna have an interesting take on the niche and you wanna keep hitting on that subject matter and engaging with your readers. That's just kind of marketing 101. But this is a point I'm trying to get across here is that when you tell people you have a YouTube channel, people tend to peg you into that one use case, that one basket. Oh, you're on YouTube, you must be trying to make money, you need to niche down. I'm suggesting that YouTube is an insanely good video. Two things YouTube is. Firstly, it's an amazing video hosting platform and they offer, as I said, an insane deal. There's no real limit on how many videos you can upload to YouTube. And it probably is a limit, you know, designed to prevent abuse of the platform, but there's no limit that anyone using it in a normal fashion is going to encounter. So you can upload as much as you want and the amount of storage that YouTube actually gives you for free, because video is a heavy, video is a heavy thing. It's a lot heavier than uh, text or audio, right? So YouTube is basically saying, for no cost, sign up to an sign up to our uh, network, and so long as you don't, you know, abuse the system or abuse our ter our terms and conditions, you can store as much as you want here. And the second amazing aspect of the YouTube deal is you don't even have to make it public. My YouTube channel has I think about 150 public videos. The rest of my videos, which is why my video count is high, I put up videos of me testing out different cameras and microphones. The privacy is on private. And if I want to listen back, oh, I got that microphone, I did a sound test, let me listen to it, I can just go into my own YouTube video. So I store not only the stuff I'm putting out publicly, I also have this library of my own video audio test. You could even do uh, your own private blogs and set them to private. You could, do, um, you could do unlisted vlogs and send them out as a newsletter, right? You could have a little family for your, a little newsletter for your family and friends, record a vlog like I'm doing now, set the privacy to unlisted, and you can do that as many times as you want, all for free. So I guess where I'm going with this line of thought that I've been having today about YouTube is that I think it's very unfortunate that um, people are so obsessed today with monetization and the idea that any enterprise one engages in, in their free time or otherwise, must be towards making money. I'm suggesting that it's just as valid to be on YouTube, not for the subscriber functionality. There's no way to dis disable that on YouTube. So even if you are interested in using YouTube to share, there's no way you can prevent people, to the best of my knowledge, from subscribing to your channel. So it is what it is. If people really like your uh, the, the content you're putting out irrespective of the niches, they can subscribe to you and they have an option to su subscribe to um, like the low level subscribe option where YouTube will send the subscribers content they think they'll enjoy or subscribe to every single thing they put out. So it's, you, you're not forcing, you're not inflicting your videos on anyone even if you can prevent the subscribe option because it's really uh, the choice of anyone to subscribe to your channel or not. So my concluding thought to this vlog is that I think that I think that YouTube creators, I think that there's a lot of people out there who are finding very constructive uses for YouTube and are almost feeling like this crazy sense of pressure from whether it's just the other people on YouTube or even friends or family sometimes that you have to view it as a money-making enterprise. And what I'm suggesting here is that it's just as legitimate to use YouTube for the amazing technology that, that it is because it's an amazing technology, right? I upload this video to YouTube, which I'm gonna do now, and it's now publicly available on the internet. Someone in Kenya can stream this video. Someone in the US can stream this video. Anyone in the world, in fact, who has internet and where YouTube isn't blocked can view this video. And that's so powerful. That is really an immensely powerful thing that we just completely take for granted. And in order for that to work, what you, the effort YouTube have gone to in developing huge storage capacity and amazing processing power to take uh, the video people upload and make it automatically available in different resolutions. Even the auto transcription feature where in which when I read, YouTube will automatically, AI will interpret uh, what I say and give a free transcription. These are all actually com software components that otherwise cost money, right? If you use Rev, you have to pay even for an AI generated transcription. So the package YouTube offers is insanely good when you think about it. 
And so many benefits can accrue to just being on YouTube besides monetization. Um, I enjoy getting comments and emails from people who watch my videos. Some of my friends have started watching my videos and they tell me about them, that they watch them. I enjoy interviewing people on this YouTube channel. Gets, you know, last night I talked to a really awesome computer scientist. So um, I think there's so many, I don't think there's one legitimate way to use YouTube. I don't think there are rules as people suggest that you have to monetize and because you have to monetize, you have to stick to a niche. I think um, that is just unnecessary societal pressure and I think everyone uh, should, should, should feel free and at liberty to make maximal use of YouTube in the way that feels comfortable for them. Perhaps you've got one monetized channel, one unmonetized, one unmonetized channel where you just shoot from the hip, but I don't think there's any uh, rules that one has to go down a certain pathway and that unfortunately often does get presented as the only option and it's just not the case. Thank you guys for watching this video and um, until the next one, I hope everyone has a great day.